Welcome to the virtual site meeting and site walk for the ABC Cleaners site in Jacksonville, Onslow County, North Carolina. This video was prepared to provide an overview of the site features, site history, and anticipated remedial actions required to treat the source area contamination. Remedial activity at the site will be in two phases. The first and focus of this presentation is treating source material, both soil and groundwater, that are continuous sources of downgradient groundwater contamination. The second phase will be the dissolved phase of PCE and PCE degradation products in the off-site groundwater plume east of the site. Anna Cornelius is the remedial project manager for EPA and will oversee activities that occur at the site. This presentation will give a brief overview of the site and site features, site history, a conceptual description of thermal remediation, and a virtual site walk. More detailed information is available in the RD and other documents in the administrative record of the repository housed at the Onslow Public Library at 58 Doris Avenue East, Jacksonville, North Carolina, or the EPA ABC One Hour Cleaners webpage at www.epa.gov forward slash superfund forward slash ABC dash one dash hour dash cleaners. The ABC One Hour Cleaners site is located at 2127 Lejeune Boulevard in Jacksonville, Onslow County, North Carolina. The one acre site is located north across Lejeune Boulevard from the Camp Lejeune Marine Corps base. Tarawa Terrace, which is part of Camp Lejeune, is located south of the site and serves as a housing community for non-commissioned officers. In 1984, drinking water wells supplying water to Tarawa Terrace were found to contain PCE and its degradation products, prompting an investigation by the state of North Carolina. This investigation concluded that ABC Cleaners was the source of groundwater contamination. From 2007 to 2011, a groundwater pump and treat system was operated at Tarawa Terrace to help address the groundwater contamination. The site consisted of three buildings, which were constructed between the 1940s to 1960s, that joined to form one complex. The front building, located closest to Lejeune Boulevard, served as the customer receiving area. No dry cleaning activities were reported to have taken place in this building, which is supported by soil samples collected in this area. The middle building housed the dry cleaning operations. A septic tank absorption system was installed in the rear of this building in the early 1940s. The system was comprised of an underground concrete tank, which measures approximately 5 feet long, 3 feet wide, and 6 feet deep, a concrete lid, and a pipe of an unknown length that discharged into the subsurface soil between the middle and rear buildings. In the 1960s, a floor drain was installed that connected between the septic tank and water and sewage system. Wastewater from the dry cleaning operations and lavatories was discharged into the septic tank until 1985, when the lavatories were connected to the water and sewage system. A 250-gallon above-ground storage tank, which contained the dry cleaning solvents, was located on the western side of the middle building within four feet of the septic system. The northernmost building is where finishing activities such as ironing and starching took place. This is the area where the septic drain field was located. Soil samples beneath this building are limited, but do not indicate high levels of contamination. There is an open area located directly behind the rear building. This area is covered in grass with some gravel. An underground storage tank, which is believed to have stored petroleum products, is located in this area. Soil samples determined that the UST has not contributed to or caused the site contamination. Dry cleaning operations took place at the site from 1964 until 2005. The dry cleaning operations were terminated in 2005 where the function of the facility served solely as a drop-off location from which clothes were taken to another location for cleaning. In 2011, all commercial operations at the site were terminated. The middle building was demolished in 2014, with the remaining buildings being demolished in December 2017. Due to the presence of the highly impacted PCE soil, the concrete pad was left intact as a protective measure, and a fence was installed. Improper disposal practices of dry cleaning solvent resulted in contamination of site soil and groundwater with tetrachloroethylene, also called PCE, 
and the products of PCE when it breaks down in the environment, including trichloroethylene, dichloroethylene, and vinyl chloride. Sample results show that the highest levels of contamination are in soil beneath the former middle building slab. In this area, concentrations of PCE in soil are high enough to indicate that residual solvent may remain in site soil. Other sample results show that PCE contamination in soil extends from this area beneath the other two building slabs and into the alleys on either side of the site. Within this area, contamination in soil has been identified as deep as 66 feet at just one location. Lower levels of PCE contamination have also been identified in shallow soil outside of former building areas, primarily in the grassy area north of the former site buildings. It was determined the contamination in these areas may act as an ongoing source contributing to groundwater contamination. In 2018, an interim record of decision was signed to address the source of groundwater contamination, the residual solvent, and contaminated soil. The interim record of decision selected in situ thermal remediation coupled with soil vapor extraction as the most appropriate soil remedy. The remedy also includes implementation of institutional controls to restrict the site use to commercial and the use of groundwater as a drinking water source. The groundwater remedy will be selected by the EPA upon the completion and evaluation of the soil remedy. The general cross-section of the site subsurface includes a Vados zone above the water table, followed by the surficial aquifer and the Castlehane aquifer. The Vados zone generally consists of interbedded sands, silts and clays extending from the surface to approximately 16 feet deep, where the water table is encountered, marking the top of the surficial aquifer. The surficial aquifer is comprised primarily of saturated quartz sand with some interfingering beds of clay, sandy clay, and silt, and extends to a varying depth of approximately 65 to 85 feet. The Castlehane Aquifer underlies the surficial aquifer at the site and is marked by a transmissive zone, which is a highly cemented layer of fossiliferous calcareous sand. The depth to the Castlehane transmissive zone is variable, but is generally encountered between 67 to 90 feet below ground, and the thickness ranges from 10 to 25 feet. This zone is suspected to transmit groundwater more quickly and may have been a conduit for more rapid contaminated groundwater migration. Below the transmissive zone, the Castlehane aquifer is primarily composed of a sandy silt to sandy clay. The thermal remediation will be conducted in the Vados zone soil and surficial aquifer soil above the transmissive zone. The remedial design established these approximate thermal treatment depths. Based on current data, thermal treatment depth intervals are anticipated to range from 0 to 20 feet farthest away from the original contamination source to primarily 0 to 50 feet at the original contamination source. A few samples indicated contamination is as deep as 66 feet in an isolated area at the source. In addition to the samples shown on this figure, subslab soil gas samples collected beneath the adjacent building to the east suggests source material is present beneath the building that will also need to be addressed by the remedy. The potential remedial action contractors will propose the type of in situ thermal remediation and associated contaminated vapor collection to be used at the site. Some types of thermal remediation that may be proposed may include, but are not limited to, thermal conduction heating, electrical resistance heating, and steam enhanced extraction. It will also be up to the contractor to determine the appropriate number of wells, well spacing, and other design attributes based on the type of thermal remediation proposed. Conceptual in situ thermal remediation layout. An example of a layout of wells may include wells or points providing a source of heat to volatilize contamination, along with wells to capture the vaporized contamination. In order to address the entire treatment area, a horizontal well may need to be installed beneath the adjacent building to the east. Wells may be horizontal or installed at an angle as necessary to address source materials beneath the alley and adjacent building, but proper access agreements will be required. All access agreements will be coordinated by EPA. For example, this conceptual layout includes wells angled beneath the alley and a horizontal vapor recovery well. Thermal Treatment Area Conceptual Cross-Section Conceptually, the thermal treatment will consist of heat input points, or wells, 
that will be distributed throughout the treatment area, with vapor extraction wells installed to collect contaminated vapors. The heat input points will heat the subsurface soil and groundwater surrounding the heat points. The volatile contamination in the subsurface will heat up to the point where it will boil and turn into a vapor, which will be collected before it enters the atmosphere. Collection of contaminated vapors will be required for protection of human health and the environment. Extracted contaminated vapors and condensation is expected to need to pass through a treatment train before discharge or disposal. Treated water discharge options may include surface water discharge, deep injection, or via publicly owned treatment works. However, the final selected method will require determination by the contractor with approval by the EPA. Shallow Soil Vapor Extraction Area The remedy also includes soil vapor extraction of contamination in shallow soil in the northern portion of the site. It includes installation of shallow horizontal vapor extraction wells at locations and depths where vapor flow would intersect the surface soil contamination with a surface cover, vapor barrier, installed to ensure capture of vapors in shallow soil without short-circuiting to the atmosphere. In the larger area to be treated, the horizontal soil vapor extraction well is coupled with a horizontal air entry well to focus the airflow. Recovered vapors are assumed to require treatment. Site Challenges Remedy Construction There are some challenges that may affect construction of the remedy. Some of the challenges that the contractor will need to address include coordinating with EPA to obtain access agreements should remedy components need to be installed in the alley or beneath the building to the east of the site, on-site subsurface obstructions from the previous soil vapor extraction system, identifying the method for disposing of treated water, keeping the remediation low profile to minimize community concerns, and protecting adjacent buildings from intrusion of contaminated vapors. Site Challenges Conceptual Traffic Control The contractor should also consider that use of the alley to the east of the site for site access will be off-limits. Therefore, contractors will access the site from the rear using Liberty Drive via either Pine Valley Road or Corbin Street from Lejeune Boulevard. Site Challenges Data Gaps In addition to remedy construction challenges, any relevant and significant data gaps in the understanding of the site conditions will need to be addressed by the contractor prior to the construction of the selected remedy. Some of these data gaps may include the confirmation of residual solvent at the site, delineation of source material beneath the building to the east, and evaluation of site hydraulic conductivity and the impact on the thermal design. Virtual Site Walk. This portion will be the video the field team made at the site, a virtual site walk showing features, areas of source contamination, etc. 1. Building Locations. The ABC site is north of Lejeune Boulevard. Previously, there were three adjoining buildings at the site, one facing Lejeune Boulevard that housed the cleaner storefront where customers were received, with the other two located behind the storefront where the cleaning activities were conducted. These three buildings have been removed, and all that is left are the concrete slabs. To the east of the site is a furniture store, which is separated from the site by a paved alleyway. This alleyway is owned by the furniture store and is off limits in terms of use. Construction in the alleyway will require an access agreement. To the west of the site is a building that houses commercial business. On the west side of the site, is an unpaved alleyway that runs north and leads to Liberty Drive behind the site. The building slabs are currently fenced and locked with two access gates. 2. Front Building Slab This is the building slab that was beneath the cleaner storefront. The front portion of the front building served as the customer receiving area. No dry cleaning activities were reported to have taken place in this building, which is supported by soil samples collected in this area. 3. Middle Building Slab This is the slab for the building that was directly behind the storefront. This middle building is where most of the dry cleaning operations took place. The majority of soil contamination, including possible napple, is beneath where the middle building once stood. The former septic tank and piping was removed and was a potential source of site contamination. The former septic tank system was installed in the middle of the building in the early 1940s. It was comprised of an underground concrete tank approximately 5 feet long, 3 feet wide, and 6 feet deep. It had a concrete lid and piping of unknown length, 
which discharged into the subsurface soils beneath the rear building. A 250-gallon above-ground storage tank, which contained the dry-cleaning solvents, was located on the western side of the middle building within four feet of the septic system. The facility's boiler was located in the northeast corner of the middle building. Site sampling indicate that the highest levels of soil contamination are between the former septic tank and boiler. It should be noted that the subsurface SVE piping from former remedial activities may remain in this area. 4. Back Building Slab this is the slab for the building in the back of the site. It is where finishing activities, such as ironing, starching, etc., took place. This is the area where the septic drain field was located. Soil samples beneath this building are limited, but do not indicate high levels of contamination. 5. Laydown Equipment Area The shallow soil vapor extraction area will be located directly north of the back building slab. North of the shallow soil vapor extraction area is open and may be used as a laydown area for equipment. This area is covered in grass with some gravel, and UST, which is believed to have stored petroleum products, is located in this area. Soil samples determined that the UST has not contributed to or caused the site contamination. 6. Western Alleyway A gravel alleyway runs along the western side of the site extending from Lejeune Boulevard to the south to Liberty Drive to the north. During dry cleaning operations, still bottoms waste was used to fill potholes along the alleyway. This alleyway is currently owned by the ABC site property owner. Use of this alleyway is shared with the commercial building to the west. 7. Utilities along Lejeune Boulevard Most underground utilities run parallel to Lejeune Boulevard. Overhead utilities are also located on the front part of the site, parallel to Lejeune Boulevard. 8. Other Utilities Underground water and sewer lines once ran along the east side of building pads. In 1984, after this septic system was no longer used, water and sewer lines reportedly ran from former bathroom at the northwestern corner of front building, east to the property line, then ran north along the building pads. These are believed to have been abandoned when the buildings were demolished. 9. Nearest Fire Hydrant In the event water is needed during construction work, the nearest fire hydrant is located at the southeast corner of the neighboring building adjacent to the west of the site. 10. Pump and Treat Building The building housing the old pump and treat system is located southeast of the site across Lejeune Boulevard, which is a very busy thoroughfare. Access is through the Tarawa Terrace entrance, which contains housing for enlisted Marine personnel. This concludes the presentation and virtual site walk of the ABC Cleaner site. If you should have any questions or require additional information, please contact Anna Cornelius with EPA at cornelius.anna at epa.gov.